Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to use a text view and the strings.xml file to access strings, plus manipulating those strings and getting your Java code to push some data into the text view. So let's build a new uh, activity here. Let's call this text view demo. And I'm just going to whip through and create a empty project, which is of course just going to be the hello world. All right, so give myself a little bit more screen space here. Um, the first thing I want to do is on my layout, here, I'll show it big screen. I'm going to, well, let's get rid of the one that they've currently got and put in our own just to make it sort of from the start. I'll take a text view on the left here and I'll drag it onto the screen, put it in the top left hand corner. Um, let's give it some text. So what do we want it to have it say? Uh, something like uh, interesting message, of which you'll have a very interesting message. We want this to be the, maybe the heading, so let's maybe let's make it centered on the screen, and I'm going to change the text style. Um, I think by default you may have it here where the text appearance is uh, not expanded, so you can expand that and then select something else if you wanted to from one of the uh, appropriate values there. I'm just going to override whatever it had before and say, well, let's go to I don't know, 24, sounds good, let's make it bold, just to show we can do some stuff with it. Okay, so now if I look at my uh, text here, one of the things that it's going to complain about is, gives me a warning here that there's a hard-coded string, interesting message. It thinks it should be in the resource file. So let's do that. I can easily do this by saying Alt-Enter, it brings up the kind of quick fix menu and I'm going to extract string resource. It will suggest a name for me, interesting message, which sounds pretty good. Um, put it in strings.xml and looks all good. And so now we can see here that instead of it being a hard-coded string, it's actually got this at symbol at the front which tells me that it's going to be pulling out a value from the resource file. So let's find that. On the left hand side there's a resource folder and in that I'm going to go to the values. My layouts you've been previously looking at are here for example for a screen layout or an activity layout. I want to now look at strings.xml and here we go. It had this sort of one we're no longer using I think and now we got the second one. So let me delete the first one. It shouldn't be in use. So now this is being compiled during the build process and packaged with my application when it's deployed to the phone. The reason why this is a benefit is now I can internationalize or translate my entire application by just translating the strings.xml file. I can in fact give Android a single application multiple strings.xml files each with the same set of names, for example like here interesting message and so on, and I then just translate this into the different languages I wish to support, German, French, and so forth. And then at runtime, based on the user's preference of their, of their uh, device, it will select the, lang or the message in the correct language. So that's very powerful. That's what professional apps should do. Okay, so if I go back here now, what I want to do is I want to see how does it get the data. So I saw that inside of my activity, it's going to start by pulling this out of that file. And so that's good. Now my translators don't need to read through my XML. Um, what I'm often going to want to do though is I'm going to want to somehow manipulate this via my Java program. So inside of my uh, Java code here, I want to do something that will start to, to process that. So let's just give it something to do here. I'm going to toss in a a button onto my UI, and let's put it in the center, why not? Let's give it a name, button uh, count, and I'm going to give it a text here of uh, count up. And let's put in another text view down here, and we'll call this txt count display. Uh, current count. And so every time I click count up, I want a number to kind of increment in here. Now, of course, these things I just typed 
are going to be hard coded in my XML. So let's go back over here. Um, incidentally, the strings name, I'm not quite sure how to do that rendering problem. Uh, if I simply run the application, which will prove it works, uh, I may have to go here to the Java code, uh, Control Shift F10 to force it to launch that. Pick my virtual device. We can see here it launches. Shrink that up so we actually fit it on the screen. The error turns out not to be a problem. And there we go. Should call it, I don't care about the manifest. Hmm. No resources found, variable, oh, app name, right. Uh, it tries to do this in my manifest, so I actually need to put that back in. Uh, app name. That was the one thing I deleted in my strings.xml. I thought it wasn't necessary, and it turns out to be used. used. So let's just fix that. Uh, app name is the thing I'm dividing, and we'll call this one uh, my test app. Let's try that again. Go back to my code and rebuild, relaunch. There we go, this is Gradle fixed. The bug, and here we are. Nothing came up. Let's try and check that through. So, oh, there we are. So everything's coming up as expected. Of course, when I click the button, nothing happens. We need to wire up something for that. Um, see me another video for how to uh, sort of do that wiring. I'm going to just type it in quick. I want the button button here is find view by ID. And that's going to be r dot id dot button count. So I got the button to work with. I indeed want to handle the imports. Button dot set on click listener to be a new view on click listener alt enter to implement the methods and now I've got the code to work with the button um, so when I click the button I want to do something um, let's start by putting some information here into this let's go to the activity uh, I'm gonna start by putting some information into this text view that I called current count I'm just gonna overwrite what's currently there we'll come back and fix that up in a minute so I want to have some sort of count, and so I'm going to create a variable up here in my class, private uh, int count equals zero, and then down here we're going to say count plus plus, and then I want to put it on the screen, and so I need to do that whole view thing. So I'm going to say this is going to be a text view, I'm going to call it just, uh, sure, text view equals text view, I need to do a find view by ID find view by id r dot id dot and I want my thing I was calling text display or text count display gain alt enter to fix up the imports and so this text count display is what's being defined on my UI here we can see it here it's saying give me a new ID called text count display and whenever I compile this XML file, it generates the R file, which I can now access. And now that I've got access to this text view, I can say text view dot, and I can say set text, and I can say something like uh, it's count. And I'll show you a common bug here, or a bug here that I ran into earlier in a minute. But let's just get it ready, get it working first. Let's go back to the emulator, launched here. Every time I click on it, we can see that it's actually changing, which is quite fantastic. It's 8, it's 9, and so forth. Now, an interesting bug is what happens if I get rid of this string here? And I say I want to set the text to whatever count is. Let me rerun. Looks good so far. Apply changes. Click count, and my app crashed. So let's go back over here and I can bring up my Android monitor. It's going to scroll back and here it says beginning of crash. It killed my uh, program. 
And what happened? Well, there was a an exception. What was the exception type? Uh, we have here a resource content res resource not found exception. Okay, so it couldn't find the resource with ID one. So it compiles all of my string resources, it gives them a number, and it puts it into the R class that is described in the previous video. Here, it's now trying to access something with number one. And where's that coming from? Well, in fact, count is number one. And there's, in fact, two versions of this set, oops, uh, set text function. Let me just delete all of this, and it'll then show me it. So here are the different versions of my set text. I can pass in a character sequence, which I'm expecting to pass in just a string. That's what I was kind of hoping for. But you'll often use actually this other one here, where you pass in the, re the resource ID. So it's interpreting my integer as a resource ID. So instead, I want to make it as I have count here. I want to make it a string. So I could have just said, you know, empty string concatenated with this. Just flip it to a string. So when I run this. It'll now force it to a string. Java will then uh, overload correctly and run the, pr the version of that I'm expecting. Oops. Um, it's going to give me an interesting message here. Incidentally, if I told it to restart the app, a toast pops up saying it didn't apply the changed code because it restarted manually. So I'll just uh, rerun that. And now every time I count up, it's working correctly. So the last thing I want to demo is how can we, in my Java code, access a string that's in strings.xml. So let's put some strings in there. Um, when I made these previous changes over here, I didn't bother to push things into my strings.xml, so let's do that now. So I'm going to search through here, get rid of that, get rid of this at the bottom. I'm going to search through for any of the hard-coded strings that I'm trying to clean up. So this one here, for example, let's put in extract string, take the default name, this one here, current count, I'm going to extract that string. So I should now have most of my strings stuffed into uh, my uh, strings.xml, and I want to get this current count one. So here it is, current count. And so I want to access that in my Java code. The way I can do that is, I'm going to put some space in here, string, I can say message, equals, and I can just call get string. And you see here that it wants, oops, It wants, either I can specify some details on it, but the easy one is to specify just the resource ID. So I want the resource ID, r dot, I'm not going to use ID anymore for that's for the things that are on the screen. I'm going to use r dot string, because I'm accessing a string, and I can pick one of the strings that's defined in my strings.xml. And I want the current count. This is my message, and then I can say something like message plus equal, I can concatenate to it maybe, I'm going to concatenate the count. I could have done this in a number of ways. Oops, I'm missing an S here in message. I'm not using that yet, so let's just toss it into here, message. I'm going to display it. So this will pull from my resource whatever text I want to have that has been internationalized. It'll concatenate to it in my program, and then display it to the screen. I'll do a Shift F10, and reload the app. Every time I click count up, it's now doing the appropriate work for me. Let me uh, expand this just to help us find that better. Oops. There. And so that's what's interesting going on here is all of the strings you see are pulled from strings.xml. And I'm doing this in Java, I'm pulling the string, I'm editing the string to add in extra information, and then I'm pushing that into a text view on the UI. Alright, thank you very much for watching.